Hi, I'm Kelsey from RuffleTemplefarmhouse.com. This is Jane, and today we are excited because our garlic came in the mail, so we are going to show you how to plant garlic. Sunny. Ugh. So we got our garlic this year from my friend Zach at North Circle Seeds. Um, he sent it priority mail today, so um, I'm excited to get it in the ground. It is um, early October here in Minnesota, and um, we typically plant garlic late September, early October. One of my neighbors, I asked how late they planted garlic, and they said that they have literally chipped away at the dirt because it was starting to freeze to get garlic in, and it was just fine the next year. So, quick plug for Zach at North Circle Seeds. They're a Minnesota-based seed company, um, very small company, uh, Zach and his partner, they grow everything themselves or grow with kind of partner farms around the Northwest area of Minnesota. And I think his tagline is regionally adapted, sustainably grown. So they're a great option for seeds. I know this last year, it was their first year um, and we're kind of in the midst of a global pandemic. So they were a really great resource for a lot of folks around here who could not get seeds um, just because a lot of our other seed sources were um, not available. So uh, let's take a look. I'll show you the first thing we do with our garlic. I'll show you the first thing we do with our garlic is to break apart the bulbs. So it looks like Zach sent me one pound of merino and one pound of Russian red. So I will keep the varieties separate so that way I know kind of which one is going to do better in our beds. So with your garlic, you don't want to be particularly rough with it. You don't want to be throwing it around. You don't want to damage the bulbs at all. You want to hang out of that one, Jane? All right, just don't eat it, please. Um, so when it comes to taking it apart, it's good to just kind of slough off the outer skin. I like to kind of loosen this middle part here a little bit and then just break apart the bulbs really gently. And I apologize, I'm kind of one-handed filming, one-handed separating the bulbs. But that's it, you just peel off that outer layer and that bulb is all ready to plant. So with your bulbs as you are separating out the cloves, just be careful that you aren't kind of nicking things with your fingernails or scraping anything because you really want to keep the garlic as intact as possible for the best success with it to eventually uh, sprout in the spring. So it's a beautiful day and I'm gonna get the garlic in the ground today. So my raised bed isn't huge, it's just roughly a little over three feet by just a little under six feet that I'm gonna be planting here. And so I have about two pounds of garlic should fill this whole bed. So we'll see how it goes and I will show you how to plant garlic in depth and spacing and all that stuff here too. So for your soil, you of course want well-drained soil and full sun. I don't think I've ever heard of any plant that wants you know, like wet soil and full shade, um, aside from like seaweed or something. But um, so our raised bed is a great spot to, to plant garlic, it has good drainage. A lot of times you want to water it in after you've planted it, but we just got a huge rain last night. So I'm not actually gonna water it in, I'll just plant it and call it good. Plant your garlic, you wanna plant it with the pointy end up, with kind of the end with a little bit of a scabby part facing down. And you wanna go down, I've read anywhere from, gosh, from one inch to six inches deep, um, but that just seems a little bit like overkill to me. So I'm gonna use just a stick. I'm just gonna push down a little bit into the soil. So I'd say the top on this one is maybe, maybe an inch down at most, and then I'm gonna cover it up. And garlic actually, as it grows, the roots will pull the bulb further down as well. So I'm gonna space them pretty much just like a hand a hands width apart. Sorry, the lighting is so crazy. It looks like I've got like iridescent angel skin or something. Um, so I'm just gonna go about this far away and that's where I'm gonna put my next clove. And like I said, I just like to use a stick to kind of push the soil in. It's just a little easier, I think. And then I'm gonna pop in my next clove, pointy end up, and cover it up. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and plant this whole bed with my garlic and then we will uh, check back in for our next steps. So as you can kind of see here, as I've been going, I have been kind of marking out where I'm gonna plant them a few at a time. And that way I'm keeping myself kind of nice and square and that way I'm not gonna double plant or over plant something. And that's really easy to do just kind of with a stick and marking your way out. If you're doing a bigger planting, you might want something that helps you a little bit if you wanna have a really nice straight lines and kind of a gridded garlic planting. And where I worked before, we would lay out cattle panels and then we would plant in each of the squares of the cattle panels and that really helped to have a really nice precise garlic row going all the way down the field. So that's an option too if you've got a much bigger area than just a little raised bed like this one. So I ended up having enough to do two beds so I have all told about 175 cloves planted just in these two small raised beds which means in the summer I should have about 175 bulbs of garlic ready to harvest. So the next thing I'm going to do is I have the straw here. I'm going to spread that out in a mulch layer across the top, about four inches thick, give or take. And you can use straw, you can use corn stalks I've heard people use, you can use leaves, whatever you have on hand to make that nice mulchy layer. Unfortunately, my piglets are still getting loose and going wherever they want around the farm, which includes the garden and digging it up, which has been kind of handy, actually. I haven't really had much cleanup to do. Excuse the goats. That's just their way. Um, so I'm also going to cover these beds just temporarily until we get the pigs moved or otherwise dealt with to keep them from digging up my garlic. Um, as I said before, we just got a huge rain so that soil is really wet. Otherwise, it's a good idea to water in the garlic before you're going to cover it with your mulch layer. And the type of garlic I planted is a hardneck variety, or the two varieties are hardneck. Those are the two varieties you're going to see, or two kind of classes of varieties you'll see are hardneck and softneck. Hardneck tends to be a lot hardier, so it's really good for up here in Minnesota. It will put out, like it sounds, like a hard stalk coming out of the top that you'll get a really pretty garlic scape from, and you can also harvest and eat the scapes. One of the negatives of hardneck garlic is it doesn't keep for as long. So if you want something that keeps a lot longer, you might choose a soft neck, soft neck garlic. And you also will see soft neck garlics are the ones that you can braid together. You can't really braid a hard neck garlic really. Uh, and soft necks are also going to have more cloves on it, but they're going to be a lot smaller. So those are kind of the two categories of garlic you'll see. Grocery stores, you pretty much are always seeing a soft neck garlic. My goodness, I don't know if you can hear, baby monitor is beeping because I'm out of range. The cat is meowing because he wants something and the goats are yelling because I'm right here. Just can't a woman just plant her garlic in peace. <laughs> anyway, in grocery stores, what you're gonna see is the soft neck garlic because it keeps for a lot longer. But again, you have those much smaller cloves. So it just really depends on kind of what you're looking for or you can plant a little bit of both, it's up to you. So thanks so much for watching. I hope that your garlic planting goes well this fall so you can have a great garlic harvest in the spring. Thanks for tuning in. You can always check back here at my channel every single week for a new video about farming, family, food, and fortitude here at our Rough and Tumble Farmhouse.